Few things are more captivating than the great beyond, the final frontier, the universe. Of the countless myriads of spiraling galaxies, radiant nebulae, clusters of stars, the universe can truly be called infinite beauty. But how do we observe its extraordinary phenomenon in such detail? What allows us such precision so far away? These questions give rise to the importance and influence of the Hubble Space Telescope. In recent astronomy, nothing has been more influential and divulging than Hubble. Its unique position is unobstructed by atmospheric distortion, providing us with nothing less than an absolutely stellar perspective of our universe. It has revolutionized space exploration, creating answers to questions and questions to answers, hence paving the way to more unprecedented discoveries. It's there and it's pervasive throughout every area of astronomy, whether it's nearby with solar system things or the most distant galaxies in cosmology. Any field of area of astronomy you want to look at, it really, uh, you know, it, it, if not dominates like it used to, is, is there in the forefront. But where did Hubble come from? How was this magnificent instrument visualized? The answer is traced back as far as 90 years ago, when the German scientist Hermann Oberth first proposed the idea of an extraterrestrial observatory in his publication of The Rocket into Interplanetary Space. Oberth explained that a rocket could achieve the necessary velocity to break past Earth's gravitational pull and possibly the atmosphere. This position would allow an image unimpeded by atmospheric turbulence, resulting in a resolution 50 times clearer than that of ground-based observatory. I guess Oberth was the big visionary. He had the dreams and the ideas and to some degree brought it to fruition. But when we go to the Hubble Space Telescope, the key character who pushed for something like that was Lyman Spitzer, a Princeton uh, astronomer. And he realized early on, here, here, Oberth planted the seed and had some basic ideas, but Spitzer was a driving force as far as getting funding, Congress and the Senate and uh, the budget of, the, of uh, NASA and the U.S. to be able to do that. So it was those people together, the visionaries and the first few steps and the first uh, pathfinders and then the people that really saw the light and wanted to, to get something like this done. Spitzer was inspired by Oberth's ideas and in 1965 headed the National Academy of Sciences to convince the scientific community and Congress of space telescopes feasibility and advantage. Spitzer mentioned the quality of the angular resolution in space, as well as the ability to perceive unabsorbed infrared and ultraviolet light. Spitzer's persistence eventually paid off, and in 1966, the first orbiting astronomical observatory was launched. The first OAO was followed by three others, two of which being absolute successes. Because of this, Spitzer was able to push a more ambitious, large-scale space telescope project, and thus, in 1975, the future Hubble began development.